Um, I hope everyone sees my slide. Um, I will gently switch to English as you hear. Do you see my slides? Okay. Um, so my name is Thomas Schmidt from the Media Informatics Group of the University of Regensburg. Um, and I will present Sentext, a tool for lexicon-based sentiment analysis in digital humanities. As, as already was said, Johanna Dangel um, was the primary developer of this tool, Christian Wolf, the supervisor of the thesis that's connected to this tool development. And yes, this is a demo, this is originally a demo slash short paper contribution. So um, I will talk a little bit about background and how we approach this tool development, but I will mainly focus on showing the tool um, by using it. So I will start with a little bit of background about sentiment analysis. Here you see just a standard um, definition of sentiment analysis, um, also called, called opinion mining, the field of study that analyzes people's opinions, sentiments, appraisals, attitudes, and emotions, mostly in written text. Overall, the idea of sentiment analysis is to try to predict um, the sentiment, the expressed sentiment in a text unit, if it's rather positive or rather negative, if it's rather neutral or something like mixed. Uh, and that's the basic premise of this um, method. And it has become a rather popular method in recent years in the text mining community in, in information science in general, and it's applied in various research areas like uh, social media analysis, analysis of product reviews, um, sentiment analysis on Twitter and uh, similar um, research branches. If you would approach sentiment uh, analysis nowadays, the state of the art idea would probably be to use some sort of um, large pre-annotated corpus about sentiment annotations. For example, you want to do Twitter sentiment analysis. Um, there are a lot of large Twitter corpora with annotated sentiment per tweet. You would use these as training corpus um, and then perform some machine learning algorithm to train a model. Probably nowadays with something like a large word embedding like BERT or similar stuff. Of course, not uh, every topic and not every research area has large um, chunks of annotated corpora. Um, and of course, especially nowadays, the, the, the modern machine learning approaches are not that transparent um, as other methods. So there's also another very popular, still very popular method, which is a little bit more simpler, um, which are lexicon based methods. And this is also what is still kind of popular in the DH community due to some sort of lack of annotated corpora, although there are developments that are going more into the direction of machine learning. Shortly about lexicon-based approaches and sentiment analysis, because this is, this is the main idea of our tool. Um, it's a rather simple concept. Um, instead of having a pre-annotated corpus, you have a pre-annotated list of words, so-called sentiment bearing words, which are annotated concerning the sentiment polarity. So if a word is rather positive or negative in the general usage of this word, and this can be a number from like one or minus one, or it can be some metric scale. And you use these lists, um, which are created in various forms, sometimes expert-based, sometimes by some sort of semi-automatic, process and then you perform rather trivial calculations for a text unit here's just a very simple example um, you simply count the words you detect as positive you count the words you detect as negative and then you perform some basic mathematical um, calculations to get an overall value of the polarity the, the expressed valence of the text of course there are some approaches to perform this more sophisticated, you can try to look at negation words, you can try to look at valence intensifiers, you can perform limitization to improve this. Um, but the overall premise is a basic calculation of the words detected in the text. As I already mentioned, um, due to the lack of corpora and because it's very transparent also and very easy to perform um, for a long time in DH um, context, lexicon-based approaches were the approaches to use when performing sentiment analysis. 
Um, just some example what people are doing, they are, for example, looking at the most negative or the negative sentiment words um, used in plays by Shakespeare, for example, here in Hamlet. They look at relationships between characters. This is a graph that um, visual, visualizes the accumulated sentiment in the speeches expressed by a specific character in a Shakespeare play, Othello towards Desdemona. And you can see in the visualization that the accumulated sentiment becomes more and more negative, which is in line with the, the real content of this play. And similar stuff was also explored in various other areas that are close to digital humanities, like literary studies, but also in for historical language and other, um, other research areas. The idea is um, the same. We also um, contributed to, to this branch of research. We explored, um, sent, um, we explored lexicon-based sentiment analysis for another tool we developed um, for quantitative drama analysis, which I will shamelessly plug in here. Um, in this specific case, we performed the lexicon-based sentiment analysis on plays of Lessing, and we, we evaluated approaches and we explored visualizations. We developed a web tool to explore sentiment analysis in Lessing's plays, um, a tool that performs um, analysis like this and produces visualizations like this. This is, for example, a bar graph visualizing how the sentiment becomes more and more negative in a play from Lessing. This is something you can identify in all of his plays. And we developed a lot of visualization for this method. But as we did this and as more users used the tool and gave us feedback on what is interesting and so on, um, the feedback we received was more and more um, towards the idea that people wanted to perform their own lexicon-based sentiment analysis. And people also wanted to have more transparency about how these results actually um, came to existence. So we saw a lack of um, tool existence in this, in this context, and we decided to actually develop such a tool that people could use to perform their own lexicon-based sentiment analysis. And the idea was to focus primarily um, on the DH community. We wanted to make it as accessible as possible. Um, my impression is that tools that need a lot of installation, need a lot of um, dependencies um, are not used that frequently than, than tools that are more accessible like web tools. And we also um, wanted to give some transparency in the context of how calculations came to existence. We also applied some methods of the user-centered design process. Um, we performed a requirements analysis. We integrated methods of usability engineering. For example, we performed interviews with a lot of, with a couple of people from the DH context, but also from um, liter but also literary scholars. Um, we performed some usability tests to gain feedback and to develop a tool that is as um, adapted to the specific community we are designing it for as possible. I will not go into detail of all of these methods since I really want to show the tool. Um, just some of the um, requirements we acquired via this process um, are shown here. As I already said, people wanted to primarily use their own material. They wanted to adjust lexicons. As you can imagine, text sorts in DH are not really contemporary language, but most of the time historical language or other specific domain specific language. And people wanted to adjust this, they wanted transparent res results. And since the web is not um, this, that, uh, and the web is seen as a very accessible pl platform to use, which of course causes also a lot of um, problems. Um, but this is the idea we followed here. So um, I summarized some of the overall functionality. We do perform some advanced stuff with our tool, like lemmatizations and negations. Right now, everything is focused on German, but we plan to extend this also on other languages. But instead of um, talking about the functionality, I will um, actually show the tool um, with a live demo. Um, and it will um, actually be 
also the first time that I explore this specific text. So um, as you already know, in IT, there can go nothing wrong with a live demo. So let's look at the tool. So I hope you all see my browser now. Can you give me short feedback? Okay. Um, so this is the start page of Sentext. We integrated a lot of documentation and explanation um, as we already make, made the experience that people are very interested in all of this. And where we explain the different pre-processing steps and what types of data you can upload, what you can download and so on. If you um, go to the sentiment analysis branch of this tool, you then can indeed um, upload your files and perform sentiment analysis. We offer some basic German sentiment lexicons, but there's also a possibility to upload your own lexicon if you follow a specific um, data standard, a rather simple standard, and um, that you can read uh, more about in our documentation of the tool. From the advanced options, as I already said, we can perform lemmatization with a, um, yeah, off the shelf, a German lemmatizer. Um, the process is very time consuming. Again, since we are in the web, everything performance is, um, is a thing, so to speak, but you can also, um, you also have some other um, adjustment possibilities like stop words list and to use negations as balance shifters and so on. Um, so I looked for a interesting example where I hope that I find some interesting results um, for, for, for state of the art research, so to speak. And what we will do, we will compare German rap lyrics with German Schlager lyrics. I looked a lot of, for the English word of Schlager, but I didn't find anything. It seems to be German Schlager. Um, and I will prepare the sentiment analysis. Um, this might take a little time, so I, of course, prepared this beforehand. Just to give you an insight how this looks, this corpus, it's basically a list of lyrics from various artists of the specific rap or schlager genre. Um, I don't know much about rap, but maybe I have some artists, yes, I have some well-known German artists of schlager. Not super representative, but of course, I just want to show how the tool is applied. So please don't, um, this, this is not about German lyrics or something like this. Nevertheless, um, if you perform the analysis, um, what you get is a screen like this. Um, on the left screen, um, in this specific case, um, the entire corpus of rap lyrics and the entire corpus of Schlager lyrics is seen as one um, one document, so to speak. So we just compare one document to each other. Um, you can, of course, um, import more documents and then create so-called folders to compare document um, collections to each other. Here we will just focus on this one um, type. We currently look at the Schlager results. You get a normalized score. Um, that's always very, very small since it is normalized by the numbers of tokens which helps to compare documents of different sizes. Um, but nevertheless, uh, the overall Im impression is indeed that um, the Schlager um, texts um, do look actually less negative than the rep texts, um, although the difference is quite small. We produce some visualizations that you can look for. Um, for example, a pie chart of the um, negative detected words and the positive detected words. You can look at the strongest sentiment bearing words. This is just for Schlager in this example. So these are the very positive words that are most frequently used for Schlager. These are the most negative words that are used for Schlager. Um, the word Hölle, I think there's this very specific song that that is the reason for this result here. Um, and you can explore other um, analysis. We also try to co connect a little bit of close reading, um, which is actually something that we found out that users really like to explore how the sentiment analysis actually works. 
in the right text, you can explore your document and look at the specific words that are detected and what, um, what sentiment value they actually have. So this is actually the part where people oftentimes go into and look at, okay, a wrong word was detected. This word shouldn't be positive and so on. Um, um, there are some words that sounds um, um, sound intuitive. Um, I was looking a bit for an example where negation comes to play, um, but I'm not sure if I can find one off the top of my head. So if a negation word is in close to a sentiment bearing word, the valence get, uh, gets um, um, gets thrown into the other um, polarity. Yes, but this is something that people actually quite uh, like. Um, you can also compare um, documents with each other. In this case, we would compare rep to Schlager, for example. Um, for example, if I want to compare the most negative words in Schlager and the most negative words in rep, you can look at something like this and then you can get an overall impression of what is happening. And I would argue that some of the results here are already telling of the specific um, genre. Of course, you can also look at this um, from, from a more um, quantitative standpoint um, of the specific word distribution. You would see here, indeed, there are more negative words, 46%, um, than, than in Schlager, which is apparently a bit more positive according to the specific methods and all the limitations that are connected to the specific method. Yes, so I um, have all the links in my presentation. I will later on also share the presentation. Of course, you also find all the links to the tool and so on um, on the specific paper to, to explore the tool. I think that's the, always the most fun with tools to explore them by there yourself. Um, from my standpoint, um, we also performed um, a usability test. I will try to go back to the slides here. I hope you all see now my slides again. Um, it was a rather small usability test, but the feedback was rather positive um, with very good, got good results. And um, of course, we had some sort of iterative development so the tool was constantly tried to improve. Um, overall, um, there are still a lot of missing features. Um, other than that, I'm rather glad uh, the tool exists. It seems to be used rather often. I have a lot of, um, my access numbers are surprisingly high. I don't know who all this, how these people all, uh, always find the tool. Um, and every now and then I, I receive some mails and what people still uh, would like the most is of course more lexicons and more languages um, could you integrate something for Spanish and so on so this is something to do and of course um, some sort of user management right now everything is more or less unknown is more or less um, yeah we, we basically save nothing from a user we did don't even save the text so you can't save um, your overall um, dashboard you can save the, the PNGs and you can save the that uh, you can download some um, tables with the results, you can download an a, a, a XML um, with your results, but, but you can't save your entire process, so to speak. So overall, um, since I'm also doing the sentiment analysis with, with other methods, um, I would say that if you, if you really wanna do a very scientific research um, project performing lexicon-based sentiment analysis, you usually need more control than this tool can offer, but I still think that this, this tool has its value. And nevertheless, you can explore a text sort, get first results, get first insights, get a first understanding of your specific text that might be problematic. And I also think this tool is very nice to use uh, for education purposes, just to show the tool, um, just to show the tool to students to explore sentiment analysis and its methodologically. So if you want to have more information, the good friends of Vortex um, the, created a very large tutorial for the tool um, that I can recommend if you want to get to know more. 
And other than this, um, I thank you for all your attention. Um, I thank for yeah, Johanna for the great tool. Um, her contact data is also here. And I hope you had some fun with the talk. Thank you very much. <laughs>